welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course introduction to paninian grammar we are studying the features of the meta language and we have noted three additional differences the first one is the meaning of a word the second one is the meaning of the cases and the third one namely the technique of pratyahara as to how to form the pratyahara and we have seen examples when pratyahara get formed we have also seen how they are formed so we studied how the pratyahara ach gets formed the pratyahara hal gets formed and the pratyahara al gets formed we also studied what these pratyaharas mean and we stated that it is all the sounds that come in between the first letter first sound and the marker sound all the letters in between they are part of the set which is denoted by the pratyahara of course the markers that come in between they are not part of the pratyahara meaning and also in terms of the consonants the vowel which is inherently pronounced or written together with the consonants for the sake of clear comprehension is also not part of the said pratyahara this is what we have studied so far and we also looked at some examples in which such pratyaharas would be used by panini in the sutras in his own grammar we also noted that depending on the environment be it the left hand side or the right hand side or be it the substituent the case will be added to this pratyahara we studied the case of ach to which the fifth case as well as the sixth case is added also the seventh case is added similarly we studied the same with reference to hal and also al so when we looked at ach and when ach is used in the fifth case we said that there is a particular grammatical operation that is happening where ach is acting as the left hand side environment which needs to be described so panini formed the pratyahara ach first and then to indicate the environment which is left hand side added the case fifth case that is panchami so you get the word achaha when any vowel or all the vowels are becoming the substituents in a particular grammatical operation which needs to be described manini formed the pratyahara ach first and then added the case sixth which indicates the substituent after the pratyahara ach then we also noted that when any vowel is becoming the right hand side environment panini formed the pratyahara ach first and then added the seventh case indicating the right hand side environment after the pratyahara ach and derived the forms achaha for fifth case achaha for sixth case and achi for the seventh case we also then studied the detailed meaning of eko yanachi which we had cited as an example earlier we also looked at how the pratyaharas ik yan and ach get formed we also looked at what they denote we also looked at how it is used and we also presented to you an expanded meaning of this sutra saying that when e u ru lu are followed by any vowel they get substituted by y w r l consonants and then we looked at the expanded meaning now in this lecture we shall study some more important pratyaharas the examples that we are taking here studying here 
they are already taken in the previous lecture. So, it is important for us to revisit those sutras that were mentioned earlier for a limited purpose and get their meaning clarified. When we when we make the meaning of the pratyahara clear, the meaning of that sutra would also become more clear. So, here are some of the more important pratyaharas that we have already studied for some limited purpose earlier in the earlier lectures. For example, ach we have already studied here is h, h standing for a, o, i and au, sutra number 3 and 4, I, a, ong and i, out. Then we have the pratyahara jhal, jabha, ghadha, dha, jabha, ghadha, dha, kapha, chatha, tha, chatha, tha, kapha, shasha, sa and ha. These are all part of the set which are denoted by the pratyahara jhal. So, jhal can be said to cover sutras 8 to 14, all the sounds that are part of 8 to 14. Remember, when we say jhal stands for all the sounds that are stated in sutras 8 to 14, we know that all the markers at the end of let us say sutra 8 to 14, they are not part of this subset. The second point is J is part of this subset. The third point is all the vowels that are mentioned along with the consonants mentioned in this subset, they are not part of this subset. The vowels which are mentioned after the consonants, they are only there for the distinct comprehension of these consonants. Now, if we compare the pratyahara jhal with the sound inventory that we studied earlier, we can say that the pratyahara jhal stands for the columns 4, 3, 2 and 1 of the sound inventory presented earlier plus sh, sh, s and h the fricative sounds. So, column 4 is in fact represented here by j, b, g, d, d, sutras 8 and 9. Column 3 is represented by j, b, g, d, d, sutra 10. Column 2 and 1 is represented by these two sutras, k, p, ch, t, th, ch, t, t and k, p that is sutra number 11 and 12. And finally, sibilants or fricatives in sutra 13 and 14. Similarly, there was a pratyahara that was used namely jash. Jash. This stands for jabhagadha jabhagadha that is sutra 8 and 9 which correspond to columns 4 and 3 in the traditional sound inventory presented earlier. Similarly, Pratyahara Jash was also used earlier. This stands for Jabagadadda that is Sutra 9. This Pratyahara denotes consonants mentioned in column 3 in the traditional sound inventory mentioned earlier. So, what we do here is now the pratyaharas that are used, we try to first of all obtain the meaning by using the technique of joining the pratyaharas. Once we get the set of sounds that are meant by the pratyahara, we then correspond them, correlate them with the columns and the rows that are present in the traditional sound inventory and compare them because the traditional sound inventory is part of the curriculum of schools even today. It was there at the time of Panini and it is there even today. So, it is very well known and that is why we 
compare the set of sounds that are available to us through these pratyaharas with the columns and the rows present in the traditional sound inventory. We also practice forming the pratyahara. For example, jhal is formed by taking, by picking l from the 14th sutra and j from the 8th sutra and we join them together and form this pratyahara and so on and so forth. Let us look at the meanings of these sutras. First, let us take Echo Yava Yavaha, 6178. In this, Echo is 6 slash 1 of H, and A Yava Yavaha is 1 slash 3 of A Yava Yav. There is the word Achi that continues from the previous sutra, 6177, and Achi is 7 slash 1 of ach indicating the right hand side environment. So, the meaning of this sutra is immediately before any vowel achi, a, o, i, au, which are the meaning of the pratyahara h, a, o, i, au, they are substituted by i, av, i, and our respectively. So, there are four substituents and four substitutes and there is a principle of correspondence that is applied over here which is also stated by 1.3.10 yatha sankhya manudesha samanam and so the first substituent A will be related with the substitute I, O with our I with I and AU with AV. So, A will be substituted by I, O will be substituted by AV, I will be substituted by I and AU will be substituted by AV. This is what is the meaning of this sutra Echo Yava Yavaha. Now, we understood when we got the meaning of the pratyahara clear to us. So, the expanded meaning is of this kind. If A is followed by any vowel, A will be substituted by aya and the output would be aya plus any vowel. If you have O plus any vowel, O will be substituted by ava and the output would be ava plus any vowel. If you have I plus any vowel, I will be substituted by I and the output would be I plus any vowel. If you have the situation AU plus any vowel, AU is substituted by AV and the output would be AV plus any vowel. This would be the expanded meaning of this sutra and here are the examples. When you have nai followed by akar and I have skipped some earlier stages of derivation, I am focusing only on the application of echo yava yavaha over here. So, we start and we shall study this derivation later on in detail. Right now, let us focus on this stage of derivation nai followed by akar. So, here you have in a nutshell i followed by a vowel a that is any vowel. Now, we apply 6178 and substitute i in place of i. So, you get the output i followed by any vowel and so nai will become nai, nai followed by any vowel and so the form that will be derived is nayaka, one who leads or a leader. Similarly, in the example pau plus aka, we once again omit all earlier stages of derivation which we shall study later on. Right now we focus only on echo yava yavaha and so we have pau plus aka that is au followed by any vowel here it is a. So, au will be substituted by av and the output would be av plus any vowel. Therefore, we will have pau plus aka 
substituted by power plus a curve that is the output and so we will get the word power curve, one who purifies the fire. Let us now look at the meaning of jhalam jash chashi. You have already seen how these pratyaharas are formed. Now let us come down to the meaning. Jhalam is 6, 3 of jhal, jash is 1, 1 of jash, jashi is 7, 1 of jash. This sutra is 8453. What the meaning of this sutra is, immediately before, before jash, that is jhabhagadhadh and jabhagadhadh, substitute jhabhagadhadh, jabhagadhadh, kapha chathath chathath, kapha shashasah by jabhagadhadh. So, if you want to convert this into the column information in the tra traditional sound inventory, we will rewrite this meaning in the following manner. We will say immediately before consonant 4 and 3, substitute consonants in column 4, 3, 2 and 1 plus shasha sa by consonants in column 3. I repeat immediately before consonants in column 4 and 3 substitute consonants in column 4, 3, 2, 1 plus shasha sa and her by consonants in column 3. In the form of an equation we can write the same thing in this fashion namely C4321 plus shasha sa he plus C434 and 3 in this situation C4321 plus shasha sa he will be substituted by C3 and the output would be C3 plus C4 and 3. The example is here we have buddha plus dhi. Again, we focus on the application of the current relevant sutra. Therefore, we focus on this stage of derivation. So, buddha plus dhi, which means the, which is part of the fourth column. So, here you have C4 followed by dhi, which begins with C4. So, now you have C4 followed by C4, which is the environment for the application of this rule, which says that substitute this C4 by C3. So, the output of this would be C3 plus C4. So, this the will be now replaced by the, which is C3 over here. So, you have buddh and dhi. And when you have choices, so C3 has 5 choices, which one to be selected, there is some scientific principle involved which we shall see when we look at the process of speech production. Right now C3 is the substitute replacing C4, so you get the in place of the and so you get the word buddhi. This is the outcome of output of the application of this sutra. Let us take a look at some more pratyaharas, some more important pratyaharas. An for example, an stands for a, e, u, always. This is the first sutra and an stands for a, e, u. Only there is one instance that is 1169 where an is taken from the sixth sutra and then the pratyahara is formed and then an stands for all vowels plus semi vowels as well as her. Otherwise everywhere whenever an occurs it stands for a, e and u. At, at stands for all vowels plus semi vowels minus l of course and her. So, at is from Sutra 1 to 5. Am, am stands for all vowels plus semi vowels plus her plus consonants in column 5. Ash 
stands for all vowels plus semi vowels plus h and consonants in column 5, 4 and 3. H, H stands for all vowels minus a. N, remember compare an with n. N always is formed with the help of the marker n which appears always in the sixth sutra. So, n always stands for all vowels minus a plus semi vowels and h. n never stands for e and u, never used in the Ashtadhyayi that way, not explicitly stated by Panini himself, but this has been established by the later commentatorial tradition, later Paninian grammatical tradition. Here are some more pratyaharas. Hush stands for semi vowels plus h plus consonants 5, 4 and 3. Hush can also be described as ash minus ach. Yar stands for all consonants minus h. Yai stands for all consonants minus sh, sh, s and h. Yam stands for semi vowels plus consonants in column 5. Val stands for all consonants minus y. Ral stands for all consonants minus y and v. Jhar stands for consonants in column 4, 3, 2, 1 plus sh, sh, s. Jai stands for all consonants in columns 4, 3, 2, 1. Jhash stands for consonants in column 4. Khar stands for consonants in column C to 1 plus sh, sh, s. Khai stands for consonants in column 2 and 1. Char stands for consonants in column 1 plus sh, sh, s. Shar stands for only sh, sh and s and shall stands for sh, sh, s and h. There are some important points that need to be noted in this discussion. They are some questions. Why the sound h comes twice? Once in the 5th sutra and then again in the 14th sutra. Similarly, why the marker n comes twice? In the 1st as well as in the 5th sutra. What is the status of vowels? stated along with the consonants. Is the vowel part of the pratyahara? We have already stated something about this, but let us revisit this and note the exception. Then what is the purpose of the rearrangement of the traditional sound inventory? Let us look at each one of these points one by one. First of all, so let us look at the question why the sound her comes twice. The sound her comes twice in these 14 sutras mainly because it has to be a part of two pratyaharas namely at and shal. These two pratyaharas stand for two different set of sounds with which in the object language in the usage behavior of her is noted. So in order to describe this linguistic usage we need her to be a part of these sets and therefore in order to account for the linguistic usage H comes in the two pratyaharas namely the fifth and the fourteenth. Let us look at the next question why the marker N comes twice? To be very frank there is no real answer, there is no real answer. The marker in a with a always stands for sounds in sutra 1. So if you have an, we have already stated this, if you use the pratyahara an, an always refers to a e u except in 1169 where it stands for all vowels 
plus semi vowels plus her. That means in 1169 the pratyahara an is formed with the help of na which comes in the fifth sutra. And the marker na with e is always denoting all the vowels minus a plus semi vowels plus her. So, the pratyahara in is formed with the marker ana which is part of sutra 5, fifth sutra. So, there is no real satisfactory answer to this question why the marker ana? This is just an explanation provided by the tradition that we must remember. What is the status of vowels? stated along with the consonants. To put it differently, is the vowel part of a pratyahara? No, the answer is no, they are not part of that pratyahara. The vowels are uttered along with the consonants for the sake of distinct comprehension of consonants. They are uttered for the convenience sake and as a convention except of course, in one case. We have already seen this explanation, but this exception we need to pay attention to. The exception is this, the exception is this, a in the sixth sutra lan. This is however not there only for the sake of distinct comprehension, it is there for that, but there is an additional function of a marker assigned to it. So, this a in the sixth sutra which comes in between l consonant and n here, this serves the function of a marker as well. And so, if you take a as a marker, then you can also form the pratyahara r in which the beginning sound is r in the fifth sutra and it ends with the marker a in this sutra. What it stands therefore for is the two sounds r and l, consonant r and consonant l. That is the only exception. Then if we go to the next point, what is the purpose of rearrangement of the traditional sound inventory? And the answer is the purpose is to account for the linguistic usage in as brief a manner as possible. That is the only purpose of this rearrangement and in an exhaustive manner possible. That is the answer. To summarize what we have studied in this lecture, we can say that the pratyahara technique is a unique feature of the meta language of Paninian grammar. It allows Panini to refer to a big set of sounds in a very brief manner possible. Panini requires 41 pratyaharas to describe the object language. Theoretically, n number of such pratyaharas are possible to form to describe the linguistic phenomenon, where if necessary. So, there are certain questions that can be asked over here based on the discussion that we have had. How does one know which is the exact substitute of which substituent? How does the system decide one of the many substitutes? What are the criteria used? What is the meta rule which allows sequential application? An answer to all these questions will be found when we look at the process of speech production and when we study the properties of sounds. This we shall take in the subsequent lectures. Now before closing today's lecture, let us follow our practice and look at the Mangala Charana taken from Prakriya Kaumudi. This Mangala Charana is and I'll read it. Shri Madhvithala Manamya Paninyadi Munin Gurun Prakriya Kaumudim Kurve 
Panini Yanu Saridim and the five sutras in today's lecture they are from 2.3 they are Anabhihite, Karmani Dvitiya, Tritiya Chahosh Chandasi, Antarantarena Yukte, Kaladvano Ratyanta Sanyoge. I'll repeat Anabhihite, Karmani Dvitiya, Tritiya Chahosh Chandasi, Antarantarena Yukte, and Kaladvano Ratyanta Sanyoge. We will take up the questions mentioned earlier later on and some more related topics in the coming lectures. Thank you for your attention.